even though they're maybe at the bottom of the league, I think they've sure they've got some good players, you know, with a new manager, we knew they'd come and make it difficult. Um, so we knew it would be a tough game, conditions were tough um, for both teams, but overall I think we've got, we've got to be happy, you know, to, to win the game and get the second at the end and, and keep a clean sheet, so that's important for us. You can't come here and expect just to soak pressure up for for 90 minutes and and, and sneak a goal. And I thought we we tried to get the balance right between, um, yeah, trying to put them under pressure, and we created some excellent chances. Mm. Uh, unfortunately for us today, we were unable to convert them. But uh, I think what was also evident today was the quality that they have within their squad. Two outrageous finishes, really, from Mohamed Salah. Both of them brilliant. Absolutely sensational counter-attack, but the first one was, pff, yeah, cannot play much better. You bring more in a 1-1 situation against the defender who has to turn. So then it's a 95% chance that he would have finished, but the finish was then really exceptional, to be honest. Right? Foster was, a, was in good shape today, so I think each other ball he would have saved. This ball, no chance. Um, and the second one, yes, sensational um, run first from Sadio and then top assist from Divock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad he could laugh about that. But another win for Liverpool. That's 16 out of 17. It, was, it wasn't perfect, right? He was it. But Mo, again, <laughs> was the man when they needed him. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect at the moment. I think that you can see how comfortable they are. But you look at this situation, and of course, you know, Liverpool are dangerous. But you look at Saar here, and we're not going to take anything from Mo. We'll talk about Mo's finish. This pass from Firmino is magnificent. Sees, uh, sees Mane. But look at Saar. You watch him getting back. This is great play from Mo. Cuts inside, Saar's run 80 yards, and then when we see it from this angle, just, just watch Saar's challenge. It's, it's nothing. It's, 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 I don't know what to say. I don't, I don't want to cane him too much, but if you run that far, you've got to make a better challenge than that. And then, in respect to this one, you just want to watch out his desire to get in the box. Look at him there. He's absolutely driving in with determination. Doesn't quite go for him there, Divock Origi, but when you're in the kind of form that Mo Salah's in, even when someone miskicks it to you, you can <laughs> improvise and make someone while you're backing it into the goal. It's just, it's, everything's going right for them. And they've Brilliant. been able to rotate their players in recent Absolutely. games. And they're still scoring goals and they're still winning those matches. Absolutely. 18 different players in the last three games scored 10 goals, two clean sheets. It's, it's, uh, it's a great place to be at the minute. Brilliant. Watford have got a new manager. Yeah. Is it the same old problems, though, for the new boss, do you think? Yeah, he knows exactly what the problem is. Nine goals in 17 games. He'll be really pleased in terms of what they, what they gave him out on the pitch, but once they get in front of goal, I mean, it is really, really poor. Good ball in. Deeney's a little bit too, uh, too late for it. But in, in terms of being brave and committing men forward, creating chances, absolutely fantastic. Kapui getting to the byline, pulls the ball back. I mean, they're, they're really guilt-head chances that they're not even hitting the, uh, the target with, uh, with a lot of them, and you have to, and that has to be the con concern for Nigel Pearson. Again, men into the box. I mean, this is probably the worst of the lot from Saar. He just completely miskicks it. Again, the ball comes back, and they, they put it over the, uh, over the bar. Second half is, is no different. Give, go, excellent to get through that, uh, that back line and into the back four. A decent save from, uh, from Allison. He made, had to make two or three good saves today with Delafeo running him in behind also. 1v1. Great pace to get in there. Should score. Yes, a good save. But as I said, very, very good chances. They'll, they'll think and they'll know that they've got to do something in January to, to stop that. Uh, he's, uh, Nigel Pearson is one of four new managers mm -hmm. that have come into the Premier League since you've been in the jungle. But yeah. if they're going to get out of this issue, no team with nine points after 17 games right here has ever survived in the Premier League. No, but when you look at the chances they created against the Liverpool side, who are playing pr pretty well at the moment, um, you have to take a lot of um, encouragement from that. That's all they can do. I know it's a bit clichéd, but they've got to take encouragement from that performance. Yeah. It's been a great week for Liverpool, though, isn't it? Oh, brilliant manager, new contract, full of confidence, heading to, uh, to Qatar on the next... 24 hours for the Club World Cup, so yeah, it, it's a very, very happy football club, and it looks that way. It's been a, a really difficult run. I think um, a lot of soul searching has gone on, a lot of a lot of thought processes. Um, we've had to change a few things. Um, we've kept losing players to injury, and we're really stretched today. And that's why all the players that played and that were involved in the game today does deserve a huge amount of credit. They really stood up to a tough test and um, responded brilliantly. I looked up to the bench after I celebrated the first time. Um, and they said it was good. Um, they have a look at the pitch I monitors sometimes and 
they said it was good, so I was just praying for a bit of luck from uh, VAR and obviously the big screen. And yeah, when the ref obviously picked the ball up and waved the goal, it was a great feeling. Yeah, moment worth waiting for. Yeah, it made it a little bit more special probably. Um, you can see by the celebrations from the lads and, and the fans. Well, disappointing, obviously, to lose at home. Um, an organised Bournemouth come here with a plan to defend deep, lots of numbers behind the ball. Um, and then the onus is on us to break them down. We weren't good enough at doing that. So it's a story that we've had here a bit this season. Uh, we've won some games where we have managed to get our goal, but when you don't, it becomes difficult. So we're disappointed. Was it one of those days perhaps when a little bit of zip was missing from some of the players in terms of their legs today? I don't know. I don't, I don't like that excuse. We've, we've had a busy schedule, but at the same time, I wouldn't blame it on zip. I'd just blame it on us getting it wrong. We should be given huge, a huge lift by who we've beaten how we've beaten them and the qualities needed to do that. We need to remember them, obviously, for the coming games. Yeah, well done to Bournemouth. We'll talk about Chelsea in a moment, but let's mm. concentrate on the victors. Nine injured players, yep. it's worth remembering that as well. But, and you want to focus on and take a look at Lerma for us. You're really impressed with him. Uh, I thought he was absolutely outstanding. When him and Philip Billing in the, in the middle of the park, when you consider the opposition, the class opposition who they were up, a, up against, I mean, it, it was a perfect midfield performance in terms of getting the ball, passing, protection in front of his, uh, his back line, setting his team uh, in the right example, running forward, defending. It had absolutely everything, not winning the first one, then winning the, uh, winning the second one. Second half, that didn't change. I said winning the first one there, setting his, uh, his team on the front foot. Give, go, there you go, go, go and play again. Whether it, was, uh, whether it was passing, short range, long range. What, how about this for a pass out to the left-hand side to, uh, to Fraser? There you go. Go and do your stuff in the, uh, in, the, in the final third. And this sort of epitomised everything good about him and Bournemouth's performance today. Look at that. The desire to get back in there and give that protection <coughs> in front of his, uh, his back foot. I thought he was, him and Bournemouth were magnificent. Yeah, some impressive stats from quite a few of the Bournemouth players. Dan Gosling really ran his backside off yes. as well. And uh, Chelsea seemed quite confident, didn't they, Righty, that their goal wasn't going to be given. But um, Gosling, well, he, he <laughs> yes. sort of knew in, in, his, in his mind it yes, was going to go. Yes, he did. Uh, first start of the season. Covered the most distance. Only Josh King had more touches in the opponent's box than him. And when you look at him here, when he gets in the box, what I like about when we see um, the, the, the second angle of it, you see him there right in the middle. He has a look. He has a look. He sees... Ashby Lecoyer ain't quite up there, and that is a cute finish. His awareness of where the goalkeeper is, and we'll see it from this angle better, because what he's done is, he's, like I say, he's got himself in the box. He, this is what I think Ashby Lecoyer should be trying to clear that. He's put it right back where the danger area is. This is Gosling has the little look. He sees Ashby Lecoyer, he knows he's onside. He starts backing off, and then this is nice. This is really nice, and I was delighted for him. You know, like I say, it's his first start of the season. He's been a fantastic professional servant to Bournemouth and, you know what I mean, he deserved his goal. Fantastic. Mm. Chelsea on a little bit of a worrying run. They've uh, lost four out of nine at home. Frank mm. Lampard was talking about a lack of urgency and, yeah. and, and you were, you're worried by a sort of lack of creativity in the team at the moment. Yeah, because um, with Jorginho and, and, the, and the calibre of player he is, I thought we were going to see more of this because when you put it into him when there's players around him, he does that and then they're away. And then you look at them and they can start attacking. But this is what Bournemouth done. I don't know if they've done it purposely. They gave people like really good a ball. Yes, Jorginho's in a position where he's not going to, he, he can't receive it, but this is what was happening. It was very comfortable for them. Again, you see Rudiger here. I think that he can give the ball hit to Jorginho here. This wasn't happening. It wasn't happening enough. Again, kicks it out of play. Second half, even more yeah. advanced. Can he put that into Mason Mount? I don't think they were doing hardly any of this today. Um, you look at Kurt there, gives it away, Kurt Zuma, and that was happening. At, this is perfect for him. Play it into him. And I think that Mason Mount, Tammy Abraham, I think even when Odson Odoi came on, I think they were, they were starved of the ball. Again, I think he's got a great opportunity to pass it there. He tries to pass it into traffic. It doesn't get there. He could have passed it to him now. Could have passed it to him now. He doesn't do it. And in the end, you know, I think that Chelsea, they were a victim of themselves. Mm -hmm. They just wasn't positive enough. Didn't give it to the players that can pass the ball. It looks like they might be able to um, do some business in January. Where would you strengthen that side at the moment? We haven't do you think? replaced the, uh, the goals from Hazard um, and also in the centre half position. I know they've got a couple of youngsters in there and Tamori, mm. etc. But they just, I think, lack something in that position. Nice to be back, isn't it, right, yeah? It is nice to be back. I love football. <laughs> <laughs> really? Much more than the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> we love having you back as well. Two games gone. Four.